This is an example of the discounted cash flow equity valuation model. I have already collected data on the weighted average cost of capital, including the market value of debt and equity, as well as the required return on debt and equity. I have also already calculated free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to equity using the last five years of financial statements. Based on recent financial performance, I have forecasted the cash flow for the next five years. I did this using the percentage of sales method and adjusted the forecast for trends in each line item. Your forecast may consider past performance, analyst estimates, company guidance, and your own opinion. Finally, I have collected the most recent observation of the firm's cash and marketable securities. We assume that the firm will continue to operate beyond the five-year forecast horizon and will generate growing cash flows in perpetuity. We place ourselves at the end of year 2023 and calculate the present value of all future cash flows. This is called the horizon value or terminal value. We multiply the last cash flow in 2023 by 1 plus the estimated cash flow growth rate to find the estimate of the cash flow in 2024. We divide this by the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate to find the terminal value. Since the terminal value occurs at the same time as the final cash flow in year 2023, we can add them together. Next, we discount all the cash flows back to the present. I am not discounting the current year because our final valuation will occur at the end of the current year. The enterprise value is the sum of these cash flows. To find the value of equity, we subtract the market value of debt from the enterprise value and add the value of cash and marketable securities. The value of each share is the total value of equity divided by the shares outstanding. Free cash flow to equity follows a similar process, except that now we are working with cash flows that accrue to shareholders rather than the entire firm, so we must use the required return on equity rather than the weighted average cost of capital. Start with the terminal value as we did with the free cash flow to the firm. Now that we are using the required return on equity rather than the weighted average cost of capital in the denominator. Find the present value of all the cash flows. The sum of the present values is the value of equity. The value of each share is the total value of equity divided by shares outstanding. 